And there it is. SpaceX and a company called Axiom Space launched their first all-private joint mission to the International Space Station this morning. NASA approved the mission, which is known as Axiom One. Yeah, three paying passengers. These are civilians, uh, space tourists, essentially. Don't call them tourists. Well, right, we'll, we'll figure that out in a second. One retired NASA astronaut uh, will spend 10 days in orbit. Eight of those days will be spent aboard the International Space Station. Joining us now is Jared Isaacman. He is the founder and CEO of the payments processing company Shipped 4. He also commanded Inspiration 4, a privately chartered space flight that launched back in 2021. It was the world's first all civilian mission to orbit. Jared, uh, thanks for joining us. And as a civilian who's been to space, can you shed some light on how folks up there are feeling just about now? Yeah, th thanks for having me. Uh, so right about now, there is a, there is a big energy swing <laughs> with the Axiom 1 crew. So uh, not that long ago, during uh, liftoff and ascent, you're talking like a, a very high adrenaline moment. Uh, once they arrived on orbit, things start to slow down a little bit. Right now, uh, they're getting out of their spacesuits. They are um, adjusting to uh, some of the physiological changes that happen in orbit. Um, you know, some of the fluid shifts that happen, they arrive instantly. So uh, it actually kind of feels like hanging upside down from your bed for almost like an endless period of time. So that's what they're adjusting to. And, and you're going to move a little bit slower at first, and you're going to kind of, uh, you know, ad adjust to this microgravity environment. And then they're going to start getting back to their timeline and, and making preparations for uh, their arrival to the International Space Station. Kind of sounds like a little bit of a high. Yeah, definitely. And they are literally <laughs> high. Uh, so uh, what are they going to be doing at the International Space Station? I mean, right? these, are, these are civilians. They're essentially tourists, right? So they're, they're going to be up there for eight they'll days in a place this. where, like, right, Streaming their favorite shows for eight days? I mean, what role do they have in a place where serious research and very sensitive and significant, uh, you know, uh, experiments are done? Well, uh, I'll, I'll tell you, I think, uh, I think Taurus is really the wrong name for it. That's, what's, uh, that's what people have been using as they're trying to adjust to this world where, you know, spaceflight no longer remains the exclusive domain of, of world superpowers. I mean, this crew, Axiom-1, went through, you know, almost a year of training. Uh, they're flying in the same vehicle that NASA astronauts take to the International Space Station. They need to have all the same training on board that vehicle, which, which for sure has a lot of automated controls, but there's a lot of manual ones as well. And now they're going to the International Space Station where they have to learn to, to survive and function in that environment. Uh, they are not coming uh, unarmed. They're bringing a lot of science and research experiments. I know we were very passionate on Inspiration4 on making sure all of our time on orbit was contributed to science and research because we, we knew how fortunate we were to be there. They feel exactly the same way. Um, they're going to be making a difference while they're there and, and with the idea that at some point you're going to be able to open up space to, to many, many others. We mean no disrespect. I just have to say, it sounds like oh. you are getting a one-on-one -on -one primer to life in space, and you sound like you study for it. And the other thing you bring to it is you pay for it. So I would, I would like to think that that's a contribution that a lot of people are nodding off, is certainly those funds go to allowing certain things to get to space. Am I correct about that? Oh, absolutely. I mean, look, all groundbreaking technology at first is super expensive. I mean, you know, rewind the clock 60 years ago, computers were the size of warehouses and, uh, and they cost an awful lot. Now, I mean, think about how, you know, in, in, how much computing power has advanced and how accessible it is to all of us, right, in, right even in our pockets with our phones. You know, cell phones uh, used to be just for the, uh, you know, the Wall Street traders in the 80s with, uh, with the big antenna on their car, right? And now, like, our, you know, our kids have access to, <laughs> yeah. to mobile technology and how much that has changed uh, the world uh, through access to information and communication. So, yes, right now space is still expensive, but it costs an, an awful lot less than it did just two years ago, and it will continue to come down until, you know, SpaceX's vision of, you know, making uh, – you know, the world a more interesting place when everyone can journey among the stars finally, you know, uh, comes to fruition. Would you go? Uh, I, if, if it got more safe and uh, <laughs> it, it got quicker and uh, be something to post and somebody, about else, Instagram and page, somebody yeah. else paid for it. But, go. but the good news is that you're going back. You're going to be on board the Polaris Dawn mission. Uh, can you tell us a quick, quick in like 20 seconds what you're going to be doing with, 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 with that? 
Yeah, so Polaris Dawn is the first mission of the Polaris program, which is up to three missions that are really uh, like tech demonstrations. Uh, they're meant to advance uh, capabilities for human spaceflight so that, again, we can open it up and make it more accessible for others to follow. Our first mission uh, will be setting a new altitude record. It'll be farther than humans have gone since we last went to the moon. We're doing a spacewalk with a new spacesuit, and we're communicating uh, at the speed of light with, uh, with Starlink laser uh, technology, which is, which is pretty cool. You're going to need that if you want to you know, send a message home from the moon and Mars someday. So we're pretty excited. And it's coming up in about uh, seven months. Jared Isaacman with some out-of-this-world insight. Thank you, Jared. <laughs> I like that. Thank you for having me.